All right, welcome back from the break. Who had a macaron? I did, they were really good. <laughs> All right, so we are ready to start our next session. Our session is titled, From Shopping List to Shopping Cart, Powered by AI. It will be led by Talha Rehman. He's the product manager at Staples. Talha is a uh, performance-driven product management professional with a keen understanding of business priorities and recognized for consistent success in developing the processes and procedures to streamline operations and enhance revenue performance. Please join me in welcoming Talha to the stage. <laughs> Thank you so much. So my name is Salha, and I work in a product management role at Staples. So basically, I just create Jira tickets in the morning, move them around all day, and at the end of the day, I just call it a day. But the stuff that we are going to be talking about today in the next 30 minutes, it's a lot more interesting and exciting than, than what, I, what my normal day looks like. As you can see in the title, there's a lot of shopping. So we are going to be talking about shopping. And Let's, let's agree to this. All of us at some stage in our life for some things, we, we feel excited to shop around for them. And you know, let me ask you a question. What, uh, when I say shopping, what comes to your mind? Like, what is that something that you want to get that, I mean, you just want to run out of this conference, you know, just get one thing provided you, provided it's, it's out there. Oh, I, I, can, I can understand you. You're all so tired. I can, I can take a guess what you, what you could have in your mind. It could be like if you are into footwear, it could be you know some really nice shoes, those heels that you always wanted to get. Could be some nice dress that you want to wear on your friend's wedding, or if you are into gadgets, yeah, it could be the new iPhone or new cell phone or your new new laptop or the technological upgrade that you that you have been considering for a while. But unfortunately, what doesn't come into our mind is something that we do really frequently, and we spend a lot of time, money, and energy on it. And that is grocery shopping. Like, I'm, I'm sure none of you thought of groceries when I said think about shopping. Yes, like none of us does, but still, like we do. We, we go out for groceries every week. We spend a lot of money on them. We spend a lot of time on them. But no, like it doesn't come into our mind when we when we think about like with the general concept of shopping. And back to school thing. That long two pages that schools give us to get before the school starts. We do it for ourselves, and then we get kids, and then we, oh, OK. But, uh, w just when we were thinking that we were done with that, we get kids, and now we have to do it for them as well. And in general, the concept of having a list and then shopping out of that, having a set list, and you, know, you don't have a lot of options, and you have to you know, just get that stuff, and you want to be just done with it. And it's not that. All of this sort of shopping, it's like it's it's not less important, and we do recognize that it's important, but we don't remember it or it's not in our mind because it's those that monotonous task that we just want to get done with it and just do it, and you know, we're not really into it. So yeah, so we don't remember it because it's not fun, and we spend a lot of time on it. So on an, av an average American spends 41 minutes per visit per week when he go out for groceries, and some of us spend a lot more. And an average American spends 6% of his annual salary on groceries. And now if you see, as we progress in our lives, in our careers, our annual, our annual income, it goes up. Our life standard, it normally goes up if you're you know, really investing in your life. And this 6%, it really goes up. So there's a lot of money going into grocery shopping every year. And uh, I, was, I was looking at some facts by Statistica. Uh, 5.3 uh, grocery, grocery business in US, it's 5.3 trillion. So it's, it's a big market. Uh, if you if you look at it from the perspective of an investor or grocery stores, so it, it is a big business. Now, e-commerce and online stores they are practically crushing the retail stores. Like users, they are they, they are preferring to shop online from the comfort of their home, from their bed, restroom, I don't know, driving. But still, we have not yet been able to capitalize on on this 5.7 trillion that goes into grocery shopping. Only 3% people in US shop for groceries online. So there is a big market gap here and a, and, and a big thing to capitalize on right over here. So now if you take a step back and see why people moved from 
shopping in retail stores to online. You, you all, you'll all agree that it was because we, uh, the companies and all of, uh, all of the organizations, they were able to provide a better user experience to customers, uh, in, like better user experience to customers on, on their online platforms as compared to the retail store. So they, they can just you know, do everything while, while, while being on their laptop or cell phone. So the, now, now if, you, if you consider that, uh, like to attack the customer, you have to provide them a better experience. And uh, seeing from the numbers, a lot of people are not shopping groceries online. So it means that we have not yet been able to provide a better user experience to customers for shopping groceries online. That's why we're not seeing it in the numbers. So to, uh, to, 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 to bump this number, what we have to do is provide a better user experience for grocery shopping. And to provide a better user experience, we have to first understand how people shop for groceries. So I have some, I have some more numbers here. 69% of women keep a grocery list. And 52% of men tend to keep a grocery list. And all of the school, they, they give you a back to school list at the start of the academic session that you have to go out and get stuff. So now you, you see the trend here. For groceries, people tend to keep a list and you know go to the store, check off items on that list. It can be a physical list, a handwritten list, machine printed list or maybe some, some notes in the app that they're, they're keeping and you know, they just check them off when they're in the store. So if you are able to develop a system that takes in that grocery list and detects products from it as well as quantity, then shopping from an online store, like grocery shopping from an online store would be just a matter of taking a picture and you have all of your stuff already populated in your, in your cart. This would significantly improve the user experience, and if, if someone is, is able to do it really better, he can capitalize on all of that market, at least some of it. And like, if you are getting a portion of 5.7 trillion, I mean, it would be significant. So this is this is what uh, we have been working on, and this is something that I, I work on outside of what I do at Staples, and we, we'll go into some of the work that I've been doing at Staples after we're done with this. So so now we have uh, we have this system where you you take. Uh, a shopping list and detects product from it. Now we'll go into the details of how we make that happen. So it's, it's a three-step process. The first step, now since we are operating on camera captured images, we really have to do image processing. Once we have really processed our image and made it you know, acceptable, we, we do text recognition. And once we have, uh, we have also recognized the text, then we do product recognition, a uh, product detection actually. And I'll go into the details of each of these modules. So when you ask a, ask a user to submit an image of a grocery list, he's not going to submit you a perfect image. He's going to send you something like this, and you can't actually operate on this. And since this is the first step of, of, of our pipeline, we have to get this right, otherwise everything will fall apart. So uh, that's why we have this process of, uh, this step of image processing where we take that image, first of all, localize the stationary li the shopping list or any list in, from that image. Then we do the perspective correction. get rid of the skew. Once we have you know, nice straight image, then you binarize it. So uh, how uh, our next step is text recognition. And how text recognition seems to work really well when there is less information pixel-wise in the image. So that's why we, 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 we lose some information in this step and binarize our image using adaptive thresholding. So after that, we get a really clean image. And now this image is really great for running our text recognition in general. The next step is text recognition. We just input that image and we get text out of it. So now you can see this is, this is uh, a back to school list and there's a lot of stuff on it that we don't want to be detected as a product. You know, uh, the headers, the footers, the check boxes and you know, some other information that school has put in as guidelines for the people who are purchasing the stuff that that uh, we we take care of that in our next step in the text recognition we you know just run the text recognition uh, optical character recognition engine and get the text out of our image so the system that we have developed it also work on handwritten lists uh, if you're into that so text recognition once we have this text the next big step is detecting product lines from non product lines because like when a user is taking an image and we are we are showing them results for shopping list, he doesn't want that. He doesn't want to see you know, something. We, we can't uh, show him results for the data, all of other stuff. So what we have to do is run a natural language, language processing system that is efficient enough to detect 
product, detect the lines that contain a product from the ones that don't have a product. So, yeah, so we detect the product lines from the non-product lines, and the next step is the lines that have a product, we have to detect the quantity to really streamline the user experience. You know, uh, we, we want to make it a matter of click. You know, just upload your list and boom, you're done. So the next step is quantity detection. So now, uh, we, we have like uh, the system that I have developed with my team, we're achieving, uh, achieving an accuracy of 90% and we have tested it on 1,500 lists. So uh, now if you, if you if you have this clean black box that takes an image of a grocery list and uh, uh, outputs products from it, you can embed it both into retail, like the physical stores, as well as e-commerce. I'll, I'll go into the applications now. So this is, this is an existing e-commerce store. What would happen is there would be, there would be an option to integrate the camera capture thing uh, just beside the search bar. That will prompt user to take image of the grocery list or shopping list or any list that they, that they have with them. So by clicking on that image, they, they'll, they'll upload the shopping list and then all of this process will take place uh, as a backend API call and user will see the products. And we can give him options about the products and you know, build a really great user experience around that. And this system will also have some applications in the, in the brick and mortar, mortar uh, stores as well. Like how many times you have been to a store and you are not able to find the stuff that you are looking for. Or like I, I just walk into the store, I pick something from the first aisle, then I go back to like, you know, the last aisle, and then, I, you know, then I'm told that the stuff that you're looking for, it's back in the first aisle. So you know, we keep circling in the store for so long. So if we have something that, if, if majority of the customer, they're maintaining a grocery list, and if somehow we can scan it at the start, uh, the, the time they enter the store and recommend them a really the optimal path through the store, it would really uh, it, it would re really make the user experience really better, and that's what we are aiming for. We want to uh, make the user experience of the customers uh, for for the grocery shopping to make it more cool. Uh, okay, so uh, they can scan the list, uh, items will be detected, and then we can navigate them through the store in a, in a really optimal way, and they, they can you know not spend more than 40 minutes inside the store like like we do now. And for, for the scanning thing, we can do it on the phone app, we can build a smart card, or it can be on a, 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 something at the start of the store too. So that thing again, like right now, grocery is not something we really look forward to. And yet we, we give so much money, we spend so much time in it, and uh, we, we have not yet been able to do it online really efficiently. So the numbers in US are 3%, but in Europe, uh, they are they're as up as 15%, but that's not it. We are, we are moving towards, we're moving away from brick and, brick and mortar, and we're moving more towards e-commerce stores. So there's a lot of potential over here. And if you are able to, if you are able to improve the user experience right here, it would be, it would, it would be a big impact. And we can, we can make the grocery shopping more fun. This number could go up and like, it, it, it won't take as long as 40 minutes to, to just do groceries. And you can, you can take that time that you save, save here, and you can use that time into a lot of useful things and you know, increase your productivity. And so like groceries is not something that you do today and you're not, you're not going to do it again. You do it every week, you do it for the rest of your lives, and as, as your family grows, your budget, your budget that you put into it, it also grows. And you know, it, you, if, if you see the, over your lifetime, the, the, the money that you spend on your groceries, it's, it's more than probably the worth of your car and some of the other big investments that you make. So you can, you can use that, you, you can use all of the time and money that you save and invest into something more productive. You can start going to the gym, learn, learn some music instrument if you're into that, and you can you know, just, just watch sports. But if, if someone can somehow improve the user experience over here, it, it, it's, a big, it's a big gap that you guys over here can bridge. Yep, that's, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much. Any questions? I have a lot of time. <laughs> so, uh, who is uh, partnering with for this? Uh, so this is this is this is not like this initiative is not triggered by Staples. It's it's just my own. Okay. Yes. 
So I mean, this is this is really in the initial stages. So I'm I have I have the working demo, but I'm I'm building on top of it. But I mean, this this thing this thing is like. Snapchat stories, everyone can build them. Like, I, I can't patent this. So if you can build it better than me, you can, you can build it. Uh, yes. <laughs> so I think that's pretty much. Oh. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty easy for, like, apples and other commodities. But what we do, like, use when it comes to, say, backpack, when there is, like, a bazillion possible SKUs, how would you figure out which one to get into the shopping cart for the customer? Yes, so I can. Uh, I have I have the demo app with me. What we do is once we detect all of all of the products, then uh, based on based on the user history, uh, we recommend him products, the brands and the stuff that he's into. So it would be a personalized experience for the user based on his past experiences and some of the stuff that he's been he has been looking in the past. I have that with me. You can I can I can show you the demo. But but that's a great question. I know you're all you're all, you're all tired. <laughs> it's been two days, but it's it's been so much fun, and and I, I feel great to be among all of the market leaders and like everyone who is so motivated to be to be you know the leader and step step up their game by using AI. So it's it's been great. Thanks, Chala. That was a fun presentation. Thank you uh, so much. <laughs> <laughs> so a uh, question for you. So when you are charting the in-store um, navigation, are you also trying to take stock in the aisle into consideration? Or will it even go the further mile saying that if customers are trying to come and pick up the uh, product and if the aisle is empty, will you look to have the aisle um, stocked? And the follow-up question uh, to that is, wouldn't it be time saving for you to adopt the model of uh, Walmart, where you just drive up to uh, a bay and have the groceries already picked up and deliver to your car, instead of having the customer even, consumer even step into the store. So if you want to answer both of them, that'd be Yes. Great. Both of them are great questions. So the first question, so like uh, the navigation through the store, I'll, I'll explain how how this thing came up. I have a friend, like the technical guy, like every every Steve Jobs has a Steve Wozniak. So by Steve Wozniak, he really wanted to solve the traveling salesman problem. Like so, if you're not aware of the traveling salesman problem, is that there's a salesman and he has to go through A, B, C, D places. What would be the optimal path for him to hit all of the places? So he was like, yes, sir. So I'm I'm doing some research and I'm you know, bro, I just want to solve it. And I was like, okay, so there, this is I can if if you can solve it, I can make money off it for both of us. So that's how this came up. So if you can if you can you know scale down that problem and f f and ap ap apply it to the retail store this is something that i'm into i have contacts I'll, I'll both of us will make a lot of money you you'll get recognition i'll get money you know fair enough so that that's how that idea came up it's it's still a little raw but but we are working on it and how we how we how, how we are testing it like we don't have any partnership yet but how we are planning to go forward with it at least for our demo and stuff we uh, we, we, we we like uh, custom feed that information for the aisles and products, just to you know, for the startup. But if when, when we get the partnership, we'll ha we'll have that information from from our partner stores. And what was your second question? Uh, just instead of putting the money in developing all the uh, navigation part, would you want to adopt the Walmart model? Uh, yes. So. Uh, yes. So yes, the the issue that I see from my perspective is. I'm not as big as Walmart, and I don't have 47,000 stores. So I'm I'm just a service provider. So I can I can like it, it would be like really hard for me to build actual stores. But what I can do is uh, the stores that we that we already have, and you know, uh, with e-commerce taking all of the business from the stores. If you can provide a really amazing in-store experience to the user, maybe we can you know, get the figures up. So. I think maybe the program is a little confusing. So do you still actually work at Staples? Oh, and yes, I, I work at Staples. And if so, can you talk about how, how does that work in terms of having that side project while working there? And maybe give us just a couple of words on what Staples is doing yes, in AI right now? Yes, so I, I, I work at Staples, and I'm on, 
on the e-commerce site merchandising team. So we take care of the home page, the product SKU page, search, and all, all of the, basically everything that you see on, when you Google stables, uh, when you hit stables.com. And uh, personally, I'm, I'm on the SKU page, and, and these days you're building a product compared to for our sites. And staples, if, if you talk about staples, staples is an institution more than an organization. It, it has this history of building talent, growing people, and you know, then these people go out and build all of, build, do, great, do great things around. And if, if, you, if you see the past, we were market leaders, but for some time we, we, we didn't innovate as, as, as much as everyone else was doing, and then we, you know, for, fell, for, we, we fell a little back. But now we, are, we, are, we, are, we, are now, we have realized that, our leaders have realized that, and we have a lot of initiatives uh, uh, going on. Uh, we, have, we, have a really, we, have, we have four teams working on personalization, and we have data, uh, data science pods located in each, of, in each of the individual teams. So that, and these data science teams, they, they also have some sort of coordination going on among them, so that something is centralized too. So good things are happening at Staples, and uh, we are going through an initiative to overhaul our, our retail store. So that, that is also something that you, that, you'll, that you should be looking forward to. Well, but to, to answer your question, th th it's separate. I'm, I'm good at multitasking. Any other questions? <laughs> Love what you're doing. Thank you so uh, it's much. totally okay if you don't want to answer this question, but have you taken this to Staples? Because I've just, you know, navigating through the store at Staples. That's, yes. Yeah, I, what's, I, I want you to test the idea here before I take it with the manager because, you know, <laughs> I, I just want to propose something to her, yeah. you know. That's fair. But, but she's, she's aware of it, and I have a meeting with her next week to go over all of this. She, she's aware of this. Amazing. All right, looks like that's it for today. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, so our next speaker will be coming up in just a few minutes. You have a